Hey friends, if you love photography and like to sell your photos and videos online, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell icon and turn on all the notifications so that you never miss any video guides from the Teaching Doc channel. And here I come. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. This is Dr. Arindam and today we'll be learning photography. Specifically, we will try to learn manual mode in a very short time. Now know this, there are many videos in YouTube for beginners which will tell you master the manual mode in 5 minutes, master the manual mode in 10 minutes. Absolutely wrong. You cannot be a master. Mastering any art takes years and years of practice. I can make you 80%, I can get you there up to 80%, but rest 20% learning that is very, very, very difficult. If you ask by percentage, even I think I know 82% of photography, I need to learn so much more. So without that being said, let's start. So in order to get into manual mode, you need to dial your camera, dial to the M mode. That will put you in charge, in full control of the three vital settings in your camera. That is ISO or ISO, aperture and shutter. And if you understand them, then you are almost done learning manual mode. Now let's understand first ISO. It's very easy to understand. Know this, the lower the ISO, the better will be the images, but darker will be the images. ISO is your camera sensitivity to light. If you lower the ISO, the camera will only detect those light which is very bright. It means your images will darken. If you have too much light, plenty of light in your scenario, you should always lower your ISO because it will give you the cleanest image possible. However, Increasing the ISO, the camera will try to put in artificial light and that will induce grains in your photo. But there are few scenarios in which if the subject is dark, in order to get perfect shutter speed, which we will be discussing later, you need to increase your ISO. But the trade-off is the images will not be clear, the images will not be sharper when you reduce noise and there will be a lot of grains in your photo. So as a rule, lower ISO, darker image, lower ISO, better image. Higher ISO, grainy image, higher ISO, images become more brighter. Next is aperture, which is super easy to understand. Aperture is the hole, okay? The size of the hole which your lens blades make, okay? In this lens, there is nine aperture blades. What they do? They simply make a hole just like pinhole camera and through that hole, light will pass through the subject, pass from the subject and will pass through that hole into the image sensor. Now, the rule is, the broader the aperture, naturally more light will enter. It will lead to a brighter image, right? So as you increase your aperture size, you should lower the F number. The number is reciprocally related to the size of the hole. So very high F number means F22. It, this means it is a very short hole. However, very low F numbers means f1.8, f1.4, the aperture size is actually increasing. So I hope you get my point. But there is also another thing that comes in relation to aperture, that is the depth of field. Now what is depth of field? It means how much you can make a subject stand out of its background. It means how much background blur or bokeh or bokeh you will be having in your photo. As a rule, the wider your aperture, the lower the f number, the greater will be the subject background separation. It means if you want your subject and background to be in perfect focus, you need to use a very small hole and you need to use a high F number. But if you want to isolate your subject from the background, then you need to use a wide aperture and a very low F number. So aperture, big aperture means small number, brighter image, better subject separation. Low aperture means high F number, subject and background will be in focus and images will be darker. The third and the easiest one to understand is shutter. Shutter means the doorway. The door will open, okay? There is a flap in your camera, whether it is mirrorless or whether it is DSLR or even when you're using a phone camera, there's an electronic shutter. It is the time when we are allowing the light to come in contact with the sensor. So naturally, if we allow more time, there will be more light entering the sensor and image will be definitely brighter. So if we use a very high shutter speed, it means the shutter is opening and closing very fast. Then a small amount of light will enter, right? So images will be darker. 
but there are ways in which we can actually reduce this aperture and shutter speed and ISO in order to make the exposure same. We will be discussing that in a moment. But know this rule, if you are using a very large shutter speed, I mean very fast shutter speed, there will be frozen motion. You can spring, capture sprinkle water droplets, you can capture a very high motion but it will remain frozen in time in photo. However, if you use a very slow shutter speed, for example, one second, two seconds, then it will create a motion blur in your photo. So the rule of shutter, faster shutter speed, frozen motion and darker images, slower shutter speed, brighter images, but there's a chance of motion blur. Now there are scenarios where we need to actually play with the aperture, and the shutter speed in order to create a creative focus of our image, right? And that's the very reason we are discussing manual mode. So you can actually use aperture, you can alter the aperture, but the exposure will remain same. You can alter the shutter speed, but the exposure will remain same. Now what is exposure? It is the look, final look of your images, whether you need, a, whether you're planning to make a darker image or whether you're planning to make a brighter image, that is the exposure. So exposure means whether your images are looking perfectly lit, well lit with respect to the ambient light that is present in your scene. So what if you actually need to alter the ISO, but you need to keep your exposure same? There are many reasons. For example, for product photography, for landscape, we prefer very low ISO, but for astrophotography, we actually prefer to shoot in high ISO, right? Now, in order to lower the ISO, you need to either number one, increase the aperture size, that is use a lower F number, or you need to decrease the shutter speed. This too may sound very easy, but increasing the aperture size may not always be an option because for kit lens, you can maximum widen your aperture to f3.5, that to at 18 millimeter, right? So increasing the shutter speed, I mean, decreasing the shutter speed is actually very easier, but you will always need a tripod for that. And if you need to increase your ISO, then what you need to do? Either you can lower the aperture, I mean, use a smaller aperture that is use a big f number, or you can simply increase the shutter speed. Now, what if you need to alter the aperture? Definitely, in some cases for landscape, we use a very high F number. That is, we want everything in focus. But for portraits, we need to use a very wide aperture because we need the subject to stand out of background. So, if you are lowering the aperture in order to keep the same exposure, you should increase the shutter speed or you can decrease the ISO. And if you want to use a smaller aperture that is a high F number, you can increase the ISO or you can decrease the shutter speed. Remember, decreasing shutter speed is very risky for handheld photography unless your lens has got image stabilization. So always keep a tripod with you whenever you are shooting with a slow shutter speed. Next, what if we need to alter the shutter speed? Now, why will you alter shutter speed? Because I just told you using slow shutter speed actually gives you blurred photos. Well, there are many uses for that. For example, if you want to shoot a night sky or any trail or motion blur or any firework or even waterfall, we need very slow shutter speed. And similarly, if we want to click on, click splash photography, any sprinkle or any motion photograph or any photography of any race course or racing car, all these or any sports, for example, we need very high shutter speed. So what you can do in order to keep the exposure same, if you use a very slow shutter speed, you can narrow the aperture or you can reduce the ISO. And if you use a very fast shutter speed, you can widen the aperture and, and or you can increase the ISO. Now there's a limit to everything. If you are shooting in very bright daylight, even increasing your camera's shutter speed to 1 4,000 or in some cases 1 8,000 will still overexpose your photos. For that reason, for those scenarios, you need to use neutral density or ND filters. And if you want, I can make separate videos on ND filters and how to use them efficiently. So our last section brings us to the question, when to use manual mode and who is manual mode for? Are you a pro photographer if you are using manual mode all the time? Well, definitely no. If you know what you are doing, it means you are a pro. You don't need to shoot in manual mode in order to become a pro, all right? In fact, I almost always shoot in aperture priority in some scenario and I almost always shoot in shutter priority in some scenario. I can make detailed videos on those modes as well. But know this, if you want to try out something, you can definitely explore manual mode, you learn your mistakes, you understand the exposure and then you can practice it out in the real world. But if you are a beginner, 
trust me putting it in p mode that is programmed auto or any one of the other modes that is aperture or shutter priority or camera will be doing half the job for you trust me you will get much better photos and probably the last question that may be coming to your mind what mode should i use in order to shoot stock photography that is the photos which actually sells because my channel is built on stock photography well definitely there is no answer to that as i told you i shoot in aperture priority i shoot in shutter priority and i almost try to upload and sell all of the images i just clicked right however if you are in a studio setup it's best to use a manual mode because you have full control of your lighting and whenever you are outside or whenever you are in a running car it's better to avoid manual mode unless you know absolutely what you are doing i also have got a dedicated video how to take stunning images from running car you can check the description for that video so that brings us to the end of this video you can rewatch this video with your camera and you can try and alter all these settings and let me know how you are exploring your manual mode and how did you like this video if you like this video please hit the thumbs up and if you are shooting with a mobile phone yes you may not be able to explore all the settings especially aperture but still you can alter in pro mode or in manual mode and you can get amazing results when you just let go of the auto mode and you explore the full creative potential of the lens so friends that's it for today the code of the day is manual if you are watching this video till now please type manual in the comment section and i will know you are watching this video and you are supporting me i hope i was able to give some good information to you guys and i hope you will now master manual photography in no time i will see you soon with another video till then bye and take care Thank you.